Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in the last big trip that we did all over Eastern Europe, uh, going through 13 countries in 30 days, 8,000 kilometers, we uh, documented that in the series Here Be Dragons, so if you haven't seen that yet, go and do that. Um, but we got a lot of questions on uh, what did we pack, what tools did we bring, uh, how does borders work and what tires and whatnot. So I'm going to explain all of that in this video in order to do a big trip like that. So stay tuned. So the trip we did was of a certain kind. We wanted to go through uh, this big area, Eastern Europe. We wanted to do back roads and off road, uh, but not a pure uh, off road adventure, but exploring and some uh, Trans Euro trail and a good mix up and, and get a lot of culture and food and things like that to experience the, the countries we went through. Uh, so we went very light in our uh, luggage. Uh, no camping gear, nothing, the, just minimal things that we could bring. We wanted to stay at the pensions and hotels where you actually meet some people and you eat the food that they prepared and so on. And also we're a small group of only four people which makes it very easy to be spontaneous about when, you, when and where you want to eat or, or get accommodation and things like that. So in the planning phase, uh, you should have a look at, of course, where you want to go and how to get there. Uh, in our case, we wanted to see Eastern Europe uh, we, and we wanted to get there by ferry to Poland. So that was the only time and date, the departure uh, date that we had for this trip. And we also had a, a person to meet in Romania, which was Dragos, but he was also flexible. So we said, see you when we get there. And we had no other plans for this trip. So planning, the trick is to do a lot of research, but don't plan anything. Just get that time window and possibilities. And when you are moving, if you don't have any times to meet, you can be spontaneous. You can, I wonder where that road goes. Um, you can say yes to an invitation um, and things like that. And that's the most important part. Be free on the bike and just roam the world. That's the spirit. Okay, so the hardware, so to speak, to, uh, to do this thing is that you need a bike in shape. Uh, you need the documents. Uh, that you need to travel around with yourself and the bike through countries and you need time and you need money. That's all. So for the bike just make sure that you have uh, brake pads and the discs and whatever the, the, um, the shape of the bike should um, be able to endure the, the distance that you're ab about to, to cover. So, and tires and so on. We can't <laughs> go too deep into that because everyone has their own. But uh, um, I chose tires that I thought could take me around the all, all the 8,000 kilometers. So uh, we, all, we all went on um, uh, Motors Adventure or Motors GPS. Uh, but yeah, just make sure that your bike is up for the trip and, and is is reliable and then you need the documents those are very important if you want to move around in in Europe and the most important uh, documents are the passport for yourself and the passport for the bike which is the registration document for for the bike because uh, yeah they want to see that you own the bike and everything uh, so that would be the most important parts because those are the things they check the most. But traveling within EU, you are lucky to even meet anyone at the border. But going through Eastern Europe, you will go uh, into EU and out of EU and then in again and, and so on. So 
those two. But And when you leave EU, you also need the green card for the bike, which is uh, international insurance document. It's called the green card. They may ask you for the show me green card. <laughs> it's not always green, but in our case, it's a green document. Uh, you should bring your own uh, national uh, driver's license, of course. Uh, and since we had some loose plans to perhaps leave Europe even, uh, to go over to the Asian side of uh, Turkey, just to put our foot in Asia. But uh, So for that, we also ordered online from our uh, national authorities uh, uh, international driver's license. So, and yeah, you can have that for one or three years, but unless you're going to the USA, I think the three-year version is what you can get if you want to leave Europe. But I think the most important part to bring is the correct mindset. You are going now to countries that have different cultures, different religion, uh, currency, f food, everything, and behavior in, in traffic and so on. And just expect that. Uh, it's an adventure. Embrace whatever is happening. So don't get annoyed with things because this is what the uh, adventure is about. Um, things will happen that will turn up as problems, but they will turn out as great memories in many cases. So you only have one thing that you want, want to avoid on this trip, and that is to injure yourself or others. Everything outside of that is just great. You have a flat, something breaks on the bike, you cannot find a room, you have misunderstandings with people, someone behaves bad in traffic. Super, you're on an adventure and that's what this is all about. So bring that mindset and go into every situation and all the people you meet with a smile and not with your guard up and you will have a fantastic time. Um, and money, um, the amount of money, you can easily count, uh, calculate that. Check on Google or, or bookings.com or wherever what the average prices for accommodations are in the region and that you're going to ride. And, and if you go in the more rural areas, they are cheaper and the riding is better and so on. So we stayed at hotels sh sharing uh, rooms as much as we could, sometimes four people in the same room, and then we go, got down to about tw uh, 10, 15 euros per, per person at good places, even with breakfast in included sometimes. Uh, you can use credit card. We went through, uh, through all of uh, Eastern Europe mainly, not the central parts, but anyway, and we brought our credit cards but you need to take out, you need the cash if you're going to stay in the country. Some countries we just uh, transited through and, and then you don't need the local currency because you aim for, if it's only transit, you aim for uh, gas stations and, and restaurants along the more beaten paths. But if you're going to spend time in a country, you need the cash. Um, like, um, yeah, we experienced that many gas stations didn't have a credit card that, um, and even hotels sometimes. Just because you find the hotel on a modern place like booking.com doesn't mean they accept credit card when you get there to pay, pay the bill. So uh, the budget for our entire trip with the ferries, two ferry uh, trips from Sweden to Poland back and forth, all the gas, all the hotels, all the food, all the beer, all the wine was about 2,500 euros per person for about 30 days for us and 8,000 kilometers. So yeah, 
that's what we averaged and uh, um, yeah we didn't look through dumpsters for food either so <laughs> yeah navigation what do you need to navigate through all these countries you need a compass perhaps if you first want to go south east and then some south and then some you can you can manage with pretty much anything uh, just make sure that it's not dependent on internet because uh, for instance in the non-eu countries internet is very expensive so you will shut everything off on your phones and everything and just use wi-fi which is available and in hotels and gas stations and and things like that so you need something offline capable and you can get that in a paper map or you can get it on your garmin device or on your mobile phone because all navigation apps even google can manage offline maps so they will work uh, even though you don't have internet so not a biggie it's not that important that you get exact the roads that you prepared at home just just go and find new places <laughs> so that's uh, go roughly there and sometimes you may be, if you want to go on the trans euro trail you have the gpx file and you just follow that uh, on the on your mobile phone or or garmin or whatever so it's not a big thing uh, there are road signs and just don't put too much attention on uh, navigation and of course the best offline navigation tools are people so talk to people ask them and maybe you'll get a beer in the in the process luggage what did we bring uh, in our luggage i'm going to uh, take away now the the camera gear that i bring uh, um, i have the backpack with my camera gear in and if you don't have camera gear so skip that so um just get on your bike with your riding gear uh, that you just need to ride the bike and the water bladder in a backpack or something like that or in the wherever you need water uh, yeah so get on your bike and then what do you need except the documents that I uh, told you about um, in the luggage in our case we only stayed at uh, hotels and pensions and things like that so besides what I was wearing I had in the bag two underwear two t-shirts um, and that's and, and two pair of socks also because that's the only thing you change really when you're riding uh, a couple of days I had a mini towel the mini camping kind if we ended up by a lake or something that we wanted to swim in uh, you need um, something to go out and have a dinner in so bring a um, pair of normal pants uh, i have uh, some these pants that are both shorts and long pants that you can yeah separate and you need some a normal pair of shoes i had a pair of sandals so yeah just some underwear to change some civil clothes and also i had this a warm layer um, and toiletries and that's it if you need anything else if you need a nice sun hat or or a pair of sunglasses or whatever you need you buy them on the road a practical thing to bring is a dry bag or two um, because you have your bag and you put your dirty laundry in the dry bag to separate it from the rest and when you want to wash it you just pour some soap or detergent on there some water and you do the adventure wash machine procedure uh, we chose t-shirts and underwear and socks of, of uh, synthetic materials there are others also that you can choose but choose something that dries quickly because you uh, you hang it up everywhere in hotel rooms or outside windows and you just want it to to dry quickly so that's good okay so we have the luggage bike 
but we also need some tools uh, on the bike uh, for yeah whatever can happen and there are mainly two things that we prepared for and that's uh, a flat make sure that you can uh, change your flat uh, so in my case, I have tubed tires, so I need the levers and the X bear tube and, and things like that. And um, we need some way to inflate tires also, compressor. Um, and the other guys with tubeless tires, they just had this quick fix uh, thing there. So that's all we needed. Um, also, just bring the tools you need to uh, do and undo the bolts and screws on your bike. Because if you go a lot of off-road, things may come loose and you may want to um, yeah, take things apart or attach things and so on. So just bring some the, the hex and torques and whatever you need to, uh, to, yeah, to do that on your bike. Also, we were four. There were no need to bring four compressors, for instance. So uh, make a check around the team and see is there anything that one has that we don't need uh, more copies of. So we had two compressors with us. Then you can also bring a lot of extra parts. I mean, uh, brake pads can wear out, uh, bearings can wear out and so on. So. But if you're going to uh, bring things for every eventual thing, you, you may break the clutch levers and, uh, or cables if you have them. Um, so bring whatever you think uh, you need, but don't overdo it. Because at least in Eastern Europe, it's still civil. You have people, you have bike parts, you have people that helps you. Perhaps even more than in Western Europe. So, yeah, whatever happens, you're, you're okay personally, everything will be uh, just, just great, perhaps even better. So, border crossings. This is what you can expect, because we crossed a lot of different borders. Uh, we had the small border crossings, which was <laughs> like Slovakia to Hungary. It was just uh, a little post there uh, with the colors of, of Hungary. Um, but also the larger border crossings to from EU to non-EU and, and vice versa. There's usually the first border control that you comes to is not the next country. It's leaving the country that you're in. They want to see what you take out of the country. So you identify yourself at that border with all the papers, uh, passport, green card, uh, registration, um, like that. Then when you're through there, you go a couple of hundred meters and there's the border to enter the next country. So that was a typical, uh, more complex border crossing that first leaving, then a bit of no man's land and then entering. We didn't experience any problems or corruption or anything on our trip. And you shouldn't. You just uh, be polite and, and so on. We even, uh, as mentioned before, uh, Seymour forgot his registration document for the bike. Um, and of course that was a problem. What are they going to do? First of all, you are bikers. In this case, we were bikers, four bikers from Sweden. That in itself is non-suspicious. Uh, this bike that uh, we rode on that didn't have the registration, you could tell it was uh, a correct bike, uh, a Swedish bike that he owned, because he had the other papers showing that, but not the correct document. The, we got sort of stalled because of this document loss uh, two, three times, but it always ended with, okay, just go. So maybe we're, we're lucky or we looked innocent, or, uh, but it would be a different thing if it's a big lorry with uh, merchandise that you don't have. But we had Swedish underwear.
and you arrive at the border and there's a long queue and you're thinking this is going to take hours, which it is uh, with car. But if you see a queue like that, just go past all the cars directly all the way up to the border uh, because in many cases they just waved us in, okay, come this way, and they have a special little uh, lane for you. Um, and if they don't, they will wave you back, but it gives you at least the chance of, of uh, skipping that. And stop ahead before you get to the border, get all your papers handy and quick so that they don't have to wait for you, so you have everything uh, just ready to serve. Eastern Europe, security, your bike will get stolen, you will get robbed and so on. And we actually got warnings always for the next country, not for the country that we were in, but oh, you're going through that country. Be careful because there's a lot of this and that. Um, there's always this and that. There, there are always rotten eggs in, in, in all the countries. I spoke to one guy who uh, did a 4,000 kilometer bike trip uh, through all these countries and two days after arriving back in Sweden his bike got stolen. So just don't go into situation thinking that uh, things will, bad things will happen because people are bad. People are 99.9999% of all the people are super people that are happy to see you. And especially in rural parts of, of Eastern Europe, I think. Hospitable, they love that you're coming on your bikes, you get to do high fives. And yeah, so don't be afraid of that. And you can still be smart. You, you don't leave your bike uh, unlocked outside uh, at a busy place or just at the most accommodations you always ask can I uh, put my bike somewhere uh, in a garage or what do you have and most people uh, or places they have a special little place that you can put your bikes. Um, so that's also a good thing if you travel in a smaller, smaller group because you can always fit in our case, four bikes can fit in pretty in a small place. So expect the best, but you can be smart about it too. Accommodation. Um, the way we did it, we went in a direction where we wanted to uh, go. We, without a goal, mostly we did we did not ride. Uh, knowing which city or or so we were, or village that we were going to end up in, but when the clock turned about uh, in the late afternoon at 5 p.m. ish, we uh, always checked um, internet. We found a place with internet. Went on in our case mostly Booking.com and found a place. How far more do we want to go today? What do we want? We, we had our uh, things that we needed from a place. We need some food, we need some beer and a few beds. That's, that's what you need at the end of the day. So we found those places on booking.com and then we navigated to that place and stayed there. It didn't always turn out <laughs> as, as uh, advertised, um, but that was mostly because of the corona epidemic that was going on while we were traveling, because restaurants, the, the, the hotel or pension said they had a restaurant, but when we came there, uh, because of the restrictions, the restaurant was closed. So that was, um, but hopefully that's all in the past. And I haven't really talked about the, the corona situation because it didn't affect our trip uh, very much and hopefully it will be history. <laughs> so no need to cover that in this video at least. So which brings me to the, <laughs> the, the sum up what's most important uh, about 
when you go on a trip like this. I think, of course, you need the papers and bike in order, but other than that, don't worry, be happy, have an adventurous mindset that things will happen and perhaps we get a flat because things, good things will happen. Don't plan too much um, because you want to be spontaneous and interact with people. And if you didn't plan too much, that those interactions can lead to detours and taking someone's advice and, or suggestions. So that's, I think, what it's all about. And if you're ever in trouble out there, something you're stranded, if you have internet, that's a good thing. If you, if you do have that, use the fantastic biker community. Go out on Facebook groups, I'm in a pinch, uh, Twitter or whatever, whatever. People love to help. Um, and I do too, and I think you do too. So, yeah, and, and I think that came across pretty well in the Here Be Dragon series, uh, where we got help from the community and so on. So if you, if you haven't watched the series that I'm talking about, go and do that now, and I hope that you will get on your next adventure. We are already talking about where to go next. And so thanks for watching and stay tuned. Not sure what's going to hap uh, happen next, but I'm sure something will pop up. Okay, so and don't forget, please, to uh, like, subscribe and tell us about your adventure in the comments below. All right, see ya.